this video, I'm going to share how to create a pre-reduced indigo vat, which means a quick and easy to manage indigo vat that will help you achieve clear, beautiful blues and allow you to start dyeing right away. Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome to the Textile Indie channel. My name is Brittany. I'm a basket weaver, natural dyer, and textile artist. Here on YouTube, I share tutorials and inspiration in traditional crafts like basketry, natural dyeing, lat felting, spinning, and other fiber arts. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. Pre-reduced indigo is indigo that has been processed and some of the reduction is done for you so that when you do your reduction process or continue the chemical reduction, you're able to do that more quickly and more efficiently. So when you want to dye with indigo, you can create your indigo vat without weeks or days of preparation. The tools and materials you will need to do your pre-reduced indigo vat include some sort of container. You can either use a five gallon bucket or like me, use a garbage can. And this is a 32 gallon garbage can. The reason I'm using something so large is because I want to be able to dye larger pieces of fabric or more bulk at one time. If you're doing smaller pieces or doing bundles of yarn, a five gallon bucket is plenty of space. You're going to need some measuring spoons to measure out your powders, a digital scale that works in grams. Grams is a good unit to work with because you can weigh small amounts of powders. Some thermometers, some stirring sticks. You want to be able to reach the bottom of your vat, so find something that's long enough. I'm going to need a longer stick for my garbage can. You're also going to want something to insert into the bottom of your vat to lift whatever you're dying above the sediment in the bottom of the bucket or garbage can. And I have this canning jar unit. It can sit in the bottom of a canning pot so that your jars don't whack against each other. I'm going to turn this upside down to lift above that. Pre-reduced vats have less sediment than other vats like an iron vat or a fructose vat, but you still don't want your fabric sinking to the bottom and absorbing all of the concentrate of sediment. Uh, it can change the color of your material. You're also going to need pre-reduced indigo. I'm using Jacquard reduced indigo. And then color remover, also known as sodium hydrosulfite and soda ash. Lastly, I think <laughs> you're going to need some glass jars to hydrate your powders before you dump them into your container. And then I have a large pot for water over here. I'm going to be preheating water to add to my bucket as we're building our vat so that it's warm enough to create the fermentation process or the reduction process that we want. You're also going to want safety equipment like rubber gloves, an N95 mask, and an apron. The recipe I'm sharing in this video is for a 28 gallon vat, but if you want to make something smaller like a five gallon vat, I have a recipe for that size in a blog post. You can find a link to that in the description below. For the five gallon vat, you would be filling it up with four gallons of water and then using 20 grams of the pre-reduced pre indigo, 50 grams of the sodium hydrosulfite and 100 grams of soda ash. To create the 32 gallon vat, I'm going to be doing 140 grams of pre-reduced indigo, 350 grams of sodium hydrosulfite, and 700 grams of soda ash with 28 gallons of water. I'm going to measure these powders out. Be sure to put on your mask. Don't want to breathe these things. You may also want to wear gloves when you're working with this stuff just because the indigo does stain. I'm tearing this, my jar, so that's at zero. And then I'm going to add the powders until I have 140 grams of the crystals. And I'll show you what these crystals look like. They're kind of pretty, a little bit shiny. And as soon as you're done, you will want to put this in a Ziploc or pour it into a jar for easier access. Do the sodium hydrosulfite next. I'm going for 350 grams of this. The kettle 
hot water here. I'm going to just start pouring some over. Don't pour boiling water over your indigo, that will be too hot. And then for the indigo, I'm just gonna put in hot water from the tank. So I have this beautiful flower forming on the top there. Thoroughly stir the granules so that there's no excess powder in the bottom of your jars. Indigo likes to be warm, so we're going to keep the vat between 90 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So to do that, because I'm using a large vat, I will heat the water on the stove and then fill the rest of it with water from my garden hose. And then to maintain that temperature, I have a bucket heater. It looks like this. And this guy I can use to heat it up whenever it has cooled lower than 90 to 100 degrees. You can also keep it outside in the sun. That helps to keep it warm or um, insulate it with a bucket heater or towels to try to maintain that heat. Here I've added enough water from the hose that I'm going to add my hot water from the pots that I've heated and try to reach that 100 degree temperature by checking it with our thermometer. And I'm not totally filling my garbage can with water because I need enough space for displacement of the water when I put the material in to do the dyeing. So get your bin filled and then we'll add the powders. Before adding your sodium hydrosulfite and your soda ash to the bucket or garbage can, you're going to stir it up to make sure all those particles are moving around and then pour these two into your bucket first, the sodium hydrosulfite and the soda ash. And here I'm dumping out all of the excess little bits using the water in the bucket to try to get all those particles out and into the bucket. Here's the sodium hydrosulfite pouring it in and again using the water to swish it around and then you'll add the indigo trying not to disturb the surface of the water we're going to gently pour it in and then try to get all those little bits of indigo into your bucket because it's precious and we want to use it so use a hose or a sink to try to get those tidbits into your bucket to rinse them out and then you're going to give your bucket a stir to get all those ingredients mixed together so move slowly and gently so you don't cause whirlpools you'll move in one direction for about a minute and then gently move in the other direction for another minute so it's a full two minutes of mixing to get all of those chemicals and things mixed together then you'll remove your stick here i'm twisting it to lift it out trying to get a bunch of those indigo particles to stay in the bucket we'll use this again so if there's some left over don't worry about it then allow your reduction to happen for 30 minutes with the lid on while we wait for the vat to reduce i wanted to tell you that next week i'm going to be sharing a video on how to problem solve your pre-reduced indigo vat so some of the most common issues that might arise in your vat how to resolve those things so check back next week I'll put the link in the description below as soon as that video comes out so check down there or subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever I put out a new video if this tutorial has been interesting or helpful at all put the word blue in the comments below to let me know it's been inspiring to you once your powders are in and mixed into your garbage can or your five gallon bucket you are ready to insert your object for lifting the material above that sediment level so i have this guy i'm going to be placing this in the bottom to raise that level If you maintain your pre-reduced indigo vat and add indigo as you dye with it and balance the ingredients as you work with it, you can use your pre-reduced vat for many months. Check for a brilliant green color in your indigo vat. This indicates the reduction has happened and you can dye in your vat. Dip your fabric and allow to sit in the indigo for 10 minutes. This allows the particles to absorb into the fiber. Then you can lift this out and it will reveal the brilliant green of the indigo. Once it hits the air, it'll start to oxidize and you'll end up with the deep blue color. It's fun watching the oxidation process. 
Now rinse out your piece so that the water runs clear and then you'll do some finishing. I'll go over these steps in a future video so be sure to check back for that. Now you know how to start a pre-reduced indigo vat. You'll choose your container, gather your tools and materials, wet out, weigh out your ingredients, fill your container with hot water, add your ingredients and mix it and allow it to do its reduction process for about 30 minutes and then your vat will be ready to use. Hit the like button if you found this video interesting or helpful and subscribe to get notified whenever I put out a new video. Thanks for joining me today. It's a joy getting to walk the creative journey with you. And don't forget to try new things and experiment creatively. You have it in you. Until next week, happy making. See you later.